see, this is why I don't stage manage or direct or do anything in any kind of position that requires any kind of authority or decision making, because I don't care. So yes, this is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen to listen to Mark. <laughs> Mark, how do I do I'll, that? I'll do my best not to screw up reading the stage directions. Participants at the bottom, and then the list of our names will show up. You'll be able to edit yours. Oh, oh nice. Brilliant. Uh, is, or more. Uh, do we want to just rename ourselves our characters? Or like yeah. whatever, but I figured our characters would. Sure. Work. I mean, <laughs> I have <laughs> other names I can call Terrence, myself, but. Terrence mm. the Blood Mage. That's <laughs> yes, it needs, to be, it needs to be Terrence. And Royce the, the Guard. Yeah, yeah okay. specifically. Okay. <laughs> Larry, if, if Larry wants, he can have Lumpy in parentheses. <laughs> yeah. Or Hipster Jean Valjean in parentheses as well. I love that. Hold on. It worked. I brought my costume. Oh, thank you. Going above and beyond. You got, you got a pencil, Courtney? I do. Pencil. Nice. <laughs> and I've arced in my script where I have to break it. And I'm ready to just slowly go like this off screen. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. You can't actually see through this. Oh wait, no, I sort of can, but I don't want to, so I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> Work that works. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, very very Jedi of you. Yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> Josh gets it. <laughs> Josh, you, you need to teach your friend the ways of the nerd. The force it needs to he, happen. He wouldn't care. I'm not Shame. I'm, I'm into that. Shame. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> Shame. 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 <laughs> Bring out your dead. Wait, wait, wrong one. So. That episode. Wrong sci-fi. Sci-fi? Mark. Monty Python's not sci-fi. Okay, you know. Oh, no, it well, isn't. It really isn't. It could be. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it could I mean, if you, if you, I mean, I guess part of meaning of life might charitably be considered sci-fi, but that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a yoga stretch there, buddy. <laughs> It's a bit of a chaturanga. Eric so, has entered the building. Yeah. Can people see us right now? Um, yeah, <laughs> no, I can see you. Am I people? Yeah. Do I Does count as people? Us? So what, how Thank so you, Emma. Doing it, um, <laughs> Let Emma that we're going to record this session, which is recording right now, and then I'll cut this bit out. Yeah. Um, oh, and then I'll put it on um, Facebook. So um, you can share it or use it. Um, it's totally yours. Um, yeah, so easier. Awesome. <laughs> so what about people who get out of my work registered and are will they see yeah. it live then? Yes. So okay. as people, um, I was just checking the registrant list. So we have fourteen registered. Um, so they'll join. But once we get started, I'll ask anyone who's not in the reading to turn off video. And then when we go to the talk back afterwards, we'll turn video back on. Cool. Yeah, that's what we did last month and it seemed to work pretty well, so. That's awesome. Do you as the host have the ability to like mute people in case they yeah. don't? Okay. Yes, because that happened last month. But. Yeah. <laughs> I like to that too. Larry and Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Here we Is go. longer, Larry? It, it's Taylor. always longer. It's, it's it always. Gets longer and longer. <laughs> longer. I'm getting mine cut off on Saturday. Not off, but cut. You should just no, uh, not go to full, sh full Sinead O'Connor. No, no. no. <laughs> I mean, take, take a knife to it. And... Yeah, yeah, with a knife, with a dull knife. Literally cut off my bun. And just yeah. see what happens. <laughs> and then try and sell it for like. What's that? A I, no, it's it's <laughs> like a dumb person. I forgot that when you're pregnant, your hormones make your hair grow too. So my already too long hair has become a real issue. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. All around. Me neither. Me All, around. Around. All around. Or you know. <laughs> Wait, is my the not supposed to be capitalized? Typically you don't capitalize um, those. Articles, it's, yeah. a matter, it's a matter of preference. <laughs> well, I want to be preference right. Um, and uh, for the like for the audience thing, um, Terrence, aka Mark, we'll just do like what we did for the rehearsal. I feel like that went that worked just fine, and I'll just obnoxiously participate at that point. 
Oh, for you to see audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, for that part. And and we'll start off, Rich. Um, like I'll do a little like intro thing, but then I'll ask if um you want to say anything before we start, like context-wise or stuff that you're looking for, that kind of thing, just so people when they're listening can keep um keep it in mind. Sure. So, all right. My friend Adrian's here. Hey, Adrian. <laughs> nice. Right. Adrian kicks really hard. <laughs> FYI. If you say that. <laughs> don't, don't mess with Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. T minus five. <laughs> Down. White. Wake up, Sparky, oh. Lumpy. <laughs> oh, how do you say that V word? By count. There we go. Yeah, nailed it. Write it at the top of the page. <laughs> <laughs> just a stamp on every page that says by count. Now every line he has is just by count. By count. Assuaging. Assuaging. There we go. Assuaging guilt. Assuage my, my guilt. I, in summer camp with the kids, there is a line in Chicago that's something like, you know, Roxy Hart and Velma Kelly um, perform something about unrelenting something and unmitigated ego. And getting those kids to say unmitigated was a whole other thing. The way I remember unmitigated is always um, from uh, from Jim Carrey's The Grinch. The the, the, the unmitigated goal. <laughs> it always sticks in my head. Is unmitigated. We really did give that an extensive vocabulary. Well, he did not need to. <laughs> oh. Um, I don't know how everybody else is viewing, like whether people are, are grid or what, but for, for us last time, what seemed to work for on my end at least was just the default because the lines are so separated that most people have a line that takes long enough to like have the camera go to them. Um, and the only lines that are super short and choppy for the most part are just uh, Courtney and Eric. So last that's time called that active to speaker. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just gonna write that down. Yeah. Right. Oh, my pencil's broken. Darn it. <laughs> oh, darn. No, it wasn't time for that. I'm really scared. I'm not gonna be able to break this. It's gonna be. Oh, <laughs> it'll be hilarious. Huh? No, I can't. It just cracked. Yeah. Over, so I know. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Don't freak Can I do it off. off? Like, can I do it like this, or do you want yeah. me to like do it off screen? Oh, you can do it on screen. We'll just, I'll like, because the stage direction will be like, she tries to pick the lock with the finger bone, fiddles, fiddles, fiddles. And then if it, if it takes a second to break, that's totally fine. We're adding, we're adding, adding suspense. Great. Just call me Hitchcock. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my hope is that the dogs are not going to bark. They okay. bark at Eric's raised, uh, well, this is what you can do. You can go take them downstairs in the, in the bathroom. Okay. All right, That's a great Our idea. Our apartment is like a loft style, so we have no doors. So unless we like unless go put them in our half bath downstairs, <laughs> there's nowhere to keep them. So <laughs> we're gonna do that. If not, then they're guard dogs. Cool. They think they're guard dogs. They are not. <laughs> they are forty pound fakers, is what they are. <laughs> That's, I, I have a cat that is usually right by the door if anyone's in the hallway outside our apartment. Like, and she's a, she's a talker, so she'll just be like meowing her head off. Constantly. Think she's a guard cat. <laughs> Kate oh, Wilma. That's my mom, I think. Kay Wilma. <laughs> Kay Wilma. <laughs> well, yeah, Kate C. What am I thinking? At <clears throat> all. Audio. My mom, I think. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Louie! Hello! Hi! Hello, everyone. How's it going? 
I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Sorry, I'm on my iPhone and I can't like. Sorry. I'm just I literally. It's all good. I literally hosted last month from my iPhone and it was very interesting. So I, I like made sure to fix it this month. <laughs> I uh, my laptop sounded like it was gonna take off last week when I was in a Zoom session with one person. So you know, I didn't want to <laughs> mess around with like ten people. Fair point. Oh, yeah. Cancel. Right. So we're just about a minute. And like I'm gonna talk for a minute or two just to mm -hmm. see if anyone else pops in. Mm -hmm. Um and we may have people joining as as it goes. Um I'm gonna put in the chat. Um if you're not once once we start, if you are part uh if you're participating, you can keep your um cameras on. If you're um an audience member today, turn camera off during the reading and when we go to the Q and A. Um, you can turn the camera back on. So, we had a couple more in the waiting room, so we'll wait till they get situated. Two. I know one of my co-hosts is tuning in tonight. She might be a little late, though, because I know she was filming for, she's with Green Buffalo, and they were filming for their spooky one acts today. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, I I feel I feel bad because I kept accidentally calling Ellen Emma. I yep. kept calling her by your name because like they're very close, and then like it auto completed. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, there's hey, four you? Yeah. <laughs> there's four of us in that email, so we're just we just answer to whatever comes in. <laughs> the funniest thing was she like on one of them she like bolded Ellen, and then the next one I like, still <laughs> called her Emma, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm the worst. I gotta get better at that when I'm teaching. Oh my god, it's gonna be rough. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, like I said, we'll wait. We'll have people may be coming in as we go, and I'll admit them as they pop <clears throat> in. Um, my name is Emma. I am the founder and executive director of Buffalo Theater Workshop. Um, we've been going for just over uh, almost two years now. It'll be two years in October. Just super exciting. Um, and. I'm um, really excited to have all of you this this month. Um, we are taking submissions for next month um, and future future months. So if you have or if you know anyone that <laughs> has a either full length or a couple short plays, um, send them over to Buffalo Th Buffalo Theater Workshop at gmail.com and we'll take a look at them. Um, tonight we are reading Sellouts by Rich Steele, and I do ask that if. Uh, if you were not here for when I said this earlier, if you are an audience member today, please turn your camera off. And when we move to the Q&A portion of today, um, you can turn your camera back on. Um, and I'll let you know when that happens. Um, so to get started, uh, Rich, do you want to say anything about for context or what you're looking for today? Yeah, sure. Um, this is a, a thing I wrote and my friends were kind enough to read it. Um, uh, we, we, we know each other, the, the cast of this and I know each other from some shows that we did at the, at the Rochester JCC. Um, and while we were re in rehearsals, I just kind of, I was actually reading a lot of, you know, fantasy novels at the time. And I was like, wait, what if I put them in that setting and then like turned it into like The Office or some kind of sardonic comedy with that? Um, and this is a piece that I'd love to would have loved to put up at, at Fringe Fest and, and that kind of venue, some like small, because it's a like a 30, 30, 30 to 35 minute piece and hey, cut it. Um, what I'm looking for, uh, wh whatever your thoughts are. Yeah, um, I'll post it on Facebook after. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> you might have to help her mute. <laughs> Got it. I see a Wilmot at the end there. <laughs> Um, yeah, the only other thing I would, uh, I would say is, um, uh, hi, is the other thing I would say. <laughs> All right. I have a couple more joining from the wait, from the waiting room, and <clears throat> when you guys are ready, you can go ahead. I'm going to pop out, and I'll pop back in for the Q&A. Mm -hmm. cool. Give your whole Terrence. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, I will be going pretty light on the on the stage directions because you guys are good at just knowing what to do. I'm shivering with anticipation. I got what you were doing. Oh, am I supposed to start? Oh, oh, I must have been <laughs> Oh, okay, yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. You're right. Let's get going. Yeah, I'm a little, uh, little cat in my throat. All right. Sellouts, a play in one act by me. Um, lights up slowly in a dungeon. Larry, a prisoner, sits gloomily against a wall. There's a pile of rags upstage center and an old skeleton upstage right. From offstage, le from offstage left, the sound of a struggle is audible. Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Oh, fuck you! Ow! Damn it! From stage right, Taylor is hurled into the dungeon. She falls in an unceremonious clump, but immediately springs to her feet. You throw like a girl. I'll remember those faces. Next time, they'll need more than two. I swear to God, if they come near me again, I'm drop kicking them straight in the jollies. When I get out of here, there is going to be hell to pay. Barricades in the streets, torches, pitchforks, the whole thing. We are not going to take it, fascists. Hi. I'm Taylor. Larry, did you bite them? Yep. Yeah, they don't like that. Good. I'll be sure to find more things they don't like, because I'm making it my primary mission in life to make bears as miserable as humanly possible. Well, how do you plan to do that? Well, I don't have it all figured out yet. You know, you won't see them again. Those guards, they don't come back. Huh? <laughs> it's a different guy who comes to check on us. He's nicer, though. You won't see them again. Oh. I'll see them again. How? We're kind of stuck here? Well, we are now, but we won't be for long. Oh, boy. What? You're going to try and escape, aren't you? No. I'm going to write my manifesto. Yes, I'm going to try to escape. Yeah, you say that like it's a joke, but you're definitely the manifesto type. Bite me. You know? I thought about trying to escape once. It didn't work out. I can see that. And you are not me. Nope. I'm going to get us out of here. Sure. Sure you are. I am. Absolutely. Awesome. I can't wait. Good. Good. Fine. Fine. And I'll be carrying a gondola. What was that? Oh, nothing. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, good idea. I never thought about pushing against the bars. You know what? You are really not helping. Maybe if we had some rope or... Yeah, or some wings. All right, you're starting to piss me off. If you're not interested in contributing to any form of a potential solution to the current dilemma, I... just shut your humble pie bowl. If I just had my lock pick, I could, I could get this. What's that? Nothing. You sure? Mm -hmm. She starts pacing. What are you doing now? Thinking of a plan. Well, can you think without the pacing? No! Oh, okay. Hey, how's that plan going? Fuck off! That's how the plan is going. Taylor turns away from Larry and notices a skeleton. Whoa. What's that? That? Oh, that was Tim. Poor Tim. Yeah. He thought he could escape, too. You knew him? How long have you been in here? How long? How long has it been? Long enough for the snow to melt and return again. Long enough to forget the taste of real food. Long enough to number the days by the grains of sand in each desert. Too long to remember the feeling of freedom, yet too short to forget its tantalizing allure. Too long to live, yet not long enough to die. So, you don't know? Yeah, not really sure. The good days kind of blend together, you know, without the sun and all. Okay, cool. Maybe next time you could just say that? I have an idea about Jim here. 
10. Whatever. Um, okay. Maker, we ask you to bless the unfortunate soul that hath departed this husk. We ask that you allow a soul a seat at your table and a place at your hearth. We ask you, that you ask. Seriously? I'm just saying. Yeah, do your thing, whatever. You pray, do you, but don't bring me into it. Fine. Oh, maker, I ask you offer this unfortunate soul a seat at your table and a place at your hearth. I ask that you look after this soul's loved ones. I ask this because some assholes are too selfish to offer any solutions of their own. Hey. But even though they are selfish, please do not let them be stricken with horrible warts, festering boils, pestilence, plague, bacterial infections, cataracts, pneumonia, indigestion, or- You're getting awfully specific. I said not to. May they not be stricken with crippling gout at an unreasonably early age, but I digress. Back to this unfortunate soul. Trademark, copyright. May this soul know peace, may this soul know freedom, and above all, may he or she know of our profound gratitude for the sacrifice he or she now makes so that we may once again know the sweet taste of liver. Wait, hold on now. What sacrifice? Taylor lifts the arm of the skeleton gingerly, then ferociously tries to break off one of the fingers. Oh. What are you doing? God, they're really on there. Oh, for fuck's sake. Mm. Ooh. Persistent little bugger. <laughs> You're going to hell now. You're definitely going to hell. Oh, don't be such a baby. Taylor crosses to the door and attempts to pick the lock with the severed finger bone. How's that working out? Fat ass finger bone. It's too big. What do you care? Oh, when I see people mutilating corpses, I take an interest. Well, not like in a weird way or anything. Idiot. I didn't mutilate a corpse. It's a skeleton, not a corpse. Corpses have flesh. Skeletons are just bones. Big difference. Oh yeah, that makes it better. Yeah, it does. It's not like I killed anybody. You're right. Such concern for the soul of the former owner of that husk. I'm touched. What the hell do you care? You've just been sitting there fermenting in your own self-pity. At least I am trying to escape. I am doing something productive. I am making an effort. I am- Frick. Oh! The finger bone breaks off in the lock. Nice effort. At least I'm not desecrating corpses and futility. Shut up! On to plan B. Plan B? You're not gonna break off his toes now, are you? No. She crosses to Larry. What, you're gonna break my fingers now? Oh, it'll only hurt a little. Hey, no, get away. I'll oh. shut up, I swear, I'll shut up. Ah! Oh, oh, oh you want to get off me, ow! That's ah. it, put that whining to some use. Ow, oh, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! That's better. <laughs> what the hell was that? To get him over here. Hmm. What's going on? This crazy idiot attacked me. What, me? Hell no. Can the crazy idiot attack you a little quieter? Huh? I get it. It sucks. And I'm sorry that the crazy idiot attacked you. I'm sure that must make you feel very angry. Yeah, it what? I want you to know that this is a safe place, okay? You don't have to hold your feelings back. That's not good for you. Uh, are we missing something? Uh, see, we're doing this whole sensitivity training thing at work about seeing things from someone else's perspective in an effort to facilitate more amicable conflict resolution in our system, thereby preventing or at least reducing the number of incidents. Or at least reducing the severity of said incidents I mean, at least that's what the training guy said. Personally, I think it's all a load of crap, but we're supposed to try it and we're documenting everything. So, you know. Um, wait, you don't care that he's trying to kill me? Oh, uh, of course I care. That's what we're here to do. We're here to care. Me killing you? Come on, there's no way he buys that. Zip it, moron. You have to move me to a different cell. He'll attack me again as soon as you leave. Tell me you're not taking this seriously. She's completely insane. You want to see insane? Keep pushing those buttons, Bellhop. Uh, okay, okay. Let's work as a team towards de-escalating this occurrence, okay? Larry, clearly you're feeling something very strongly. 
let's use an I message, like I feel. Go on, try it. I feel. Now say how you feel. Seriously? I feel threatened. I feel threatened when? I feel threatened when she threatens me. No, nope, no, nope, see, that's, you put it back on the other party. Just talk about, oh God, this was so much easier during the simulations. Sir, if you don't mind. I mean, the simulations are scripted. I mean, uh, humans don't actually follow scripts. I mean, of course, if I get to know what the outcome is, I'll end up with a successful mediation, but that's not super useful in real life. Yeah, this doesn't seem super beneficial, to be honest. Exactly. It doesn't take into account real emotions. You can't just turn those on and off. I think it's just a way to pacify people. You know, make it seem like we're doing something when really we're not doing anything, which I'm all for. Trust me. Fine by me. But let's stop pretending that it has an impact on reality. Exactly. That's precisely the problem with the whole... Never mind. We can talk about that later. Let's stay focused on the task at hand. Right now, you need to respond to this problem. What, what problem? What problem? The problem that one of your prisoners is trying to kill the other. Yes, that problem. <laughs> See, yeah, that's, that's not really a big deal. What? Of course it is. You have to do something. I, I really don't, though. I mean, if you kill him... Aha! Uh -huh, see? I swear to Or God. if he kills you or whatever, I mean, yeah, that sucks for whoever got killed, but... But what? I mean, it doesn't have a super huge impact on me. If, it, if it's quiet, I mean, at least... Hold on. Wouldn't you get in trouble if one of us killed the other on your watch? <laughs> You'd think so, right? No, not really. All I have to do is show that I made an attempt to de-escalate the situation, which I did. But you'll need us to corroborate your story. Again, you'd think so. But nope, I just got to keep a log of all my mediations. And they just take your word for it? As long as it's documented in the right format. <laughs> I mean, it's a real pain in the ass, but essentially, yes, they take my word for it. Unless there's property damage or something, that could mean a whole new realm of different stuff to deal with. So it really doesn't matter what we say. This surprises you? We're in prison. They still have to follow rules. As prisoners, there's gotta be some sort of protocol for ethical treatment. We're still human beings. We have inherent value. I'm trying to gauge that value. Well, I'm no expert on the matter, but if I had to place a value, on your current situation, it would be somewhere between, uh, I don't know, a squirrel pelt and a pig carcass. Less than a goat though, let's say. Hey, thanks. <sighs> Far less, like even a sick goat can sometimes get some decent silver. Now that I think about it, I have a cousin who's a farmer and I might be able to get a deal on some really nice- Wait, crack. Don't we have a trial or something coming up? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that one was good. Oh, you're serious. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. So what's our sentence? What sentence? What are our sentences? How do I know? How long are we going to be in here? I don't know. I guess it depends on what you did. I mean, think about it. Why might you be in here? What did the guards say when they brought you in? I didn't steal anything. I mean, they read me something about treasonous sedition. Really? No aggravated assault? Ow! Mm -hmm. Now see, were you being seditious or treasonous? I was speaking out against the corruption and injustice that are ever-present hallmarks of the Duke's administration. Nepotism behind every bureaucratic curtain, the rock of suppression, crushing the life out of honest public discourse, and the staggering indifference towards the plight of the common people. <laughs> See, there you go. I mean, I guess what you're experiencing right now is the rock of suppression part. I think I read that on a pamphlet somewhere. How can indifference be staggering? Indifference can be staggering. No, it can't. I am staggered by his indifference to this current situation right now. No, you're not. You're angered about his priorities and the fact that our lives aren't worth as much. 
your reaction stems from your anger. You're staggered by the impact of the indifference and the consequences, not by the indifference itself. Well, I'll be sure to invite you to the next editor's meeting. For now, am I supposed to understand that I am not allowed to speak in the public market? I wouldn't advise it. I mean, if you do, stick to safe topics like weather, favorite foods, that sort of thing. Mm, this just proves my point. We are living under a totalitarian regime. I was right. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. Yeah, you good job. Uh, well, what did you do? I doubt it was anything that required a spine. Nothing really. Really? All right, I stole some bread. I was hungry, starving. Is that all? <laughs> well, okay, and a little pipe weed too. But I didn't deserve to be in here either. But there's nothing we can do about it now. I'll be in here forever. Oh, and the pity party is back in full swing. Okay, let me get my violin. Oh, you'll oh. Come Once you've forgotten the feeling of sunshine on your cheek or the wind in your face and your hair. Wait, you've been in here for one day. Really? Damn. Felt longer than that. What was in that Seriously? weed? Seriously? One day and you're like this? I gotta get out of here. Ooh, uh, are you feeling anxious or claustrophobic or not in control of your circumstances? Yes. Why? This is perfect. I can say I offered you coping strategies. At <laughs> this rate, I'll hit my quota by lunch. Okay, so what I want you to do now is take a deep breath. Okay. okay, now I want to ask you, now, wait, I want you to ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? We could die of thirst, alone and cold, forgotten by all who ever knew us. We could be stricken by some horrible disease, leaving us in a mobile yet acutely potent agony. Mm, we could go mad due to the lack of human contact, becoming Prisoners of our own minds, becoming slaves to our own oppressive delusions and fool ourselves into a puddle of miserable insanity. We could. Well, shit, I can't top that. Nice one. Mm, thank you. Okay, uh, what's the um, second worst thing that could happen? Nope, now don't tell me though. Just visualize it. And then after you visualize it, you can either accept that it's a possibility and acknowledge its power over you, focusing on what you can control and ignoring what you cannot, or you can fight defiantly against an insurmountable amount of negativity, embracing the power of positive thinking and tell yourself that it probably isn't as bad as you think it is. How do we know which one we should try? I don't know, I was kind of drifting in and out by this point in the presentation. Uh, why don't you try both and then just see which one makes you feel better? Uh, great. We'll do that. Thanks for your help. Anytime. Hey, uh, maybe if it, maybe it's bullshit and maybe it isn't, but I think it's pretty good at this stuff. So. Oh yeah, no, you're doing great. Uh -huh. I feel so much better. Don't patronize me. I wasn't patronizing. I was being sarcastic. Okay, good. Well, you two sit tight and don't go anywhere. <laughs> gotcha, I see. I'm even putting humor into my mediations now. I should teach the next seminar. I'm gonna go, hang on a second. What's that? Why is there a bone stuck in the lock? Um, mm-hmm. There is a finger bone stuck in this lock. Really? A finger bone? I mean, gee, that's weird. It was her. You really suck, dude. Why would you do that? Well, I was just trying to get it unlocked. Oh, this is just great. It's wedged really in there. I'm gonna have to call a porter and it's a weekend. Do you know how much he charges? I might even need a locksmith. That's gonna cost a fortune. Uh, hey, maybe you can let us go or at least put us somewhere nicer that isn't a stinking pit of despair and play. Yeah, I mean, if you're already gonna spend a fortune. Yeah, see, that's not how it works. Good Lord, he was just here too. If this goes into overtime, my manager is gonna kill me. I hope you're proud of yourselves. I mean, not really, just a little bit confused. You know what, so much for my nap. I'm gonna go fill out the work request now. Thanks for that too, by the way. 
Will there be anything else? A glass of freedom juice? A slice of not in jail cake? Oh wait, sorry, we're out of those. You sound like you're upset. Yeah, you should try using iMessages. Mm, fuck off. Anything else I should know before I go and rethink my whole schedule? Yes, there is something else. How much do you make here as a guard? I don't see how that is any of your business. Mm, but it is my business. It's all of our business. Don't you see that you're being exploited? You have to work so much that you have to sleep on your shift. Now, nah, see, I really don't work that hard. I sleep because it's super peaceful down here. All in all, I'm pretty content. At least when it's quiet and prisoners aren't doing damage to the place. Well, no, you're not. You're just blind to the reality of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're paid pittance to do the bid bidding of, of fat cats and fascists. Uh-huh. You need to wake up. You are a sheep being led to slaughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really sucks being in a cage. Oh wait, that's you. Bye. Coward! Well, do you have a plan C? What do you care? Oh, thou who hast forgotten the taste of freedom after like two hours. Fine, don't tell me. What? Now you want to help? Never mind. It's kind of cold down here. Well, it is a dungeon. I wonder if there's- oh! Oh! Hmm. I wouldn't touch that. Uh, that- there's no way that pile of rags is sanitary. I mean- oh my god! What the hell? Catch me outside, how about that? You scared the crap out of me. Oh my god, oh my god, I think I'm gonna have a heart attack. <sighs> you? Oh. oh, what about me? Oh god. How would you like it if I woke you up by prodding you squarely in the giblets? Who do you think you are? We thought you were a pile of rags. Who's we? Oh, how typical. Not the first time a down on his luck mage has been mistaken for a pile of rags. You know, you think we've grown? You think we've moved forward and then some entitled nitwit goes and pokes you out of the first pitful slumber I've had in a fortnight, mistaking you for last week's laundry? Look, I said I was sorry. Oh. No, you didn't. Well, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, hold on a second. I don't believe you. You don't believe me? What, I just go around poking people? <laughs> well, you did. Hey, did you just say I'm that starting to feel less sorry. Oh, what a shock. Uh, the second the scruffy brat is reprimanded. Scruffy? Who are you calling scruffy, you moth-eaten flea bag? You're basically a hotel for lice. You're pretty ugly. You know that? Hey! beat you with my bare hands, but I don't want to risk this staff infection. Oh, bring it, bitch. Hey! Oh, keep it up, I will! Hey! What? Don't yell. Uh, seriously? We're right here. Did you just say you were a mage? Yes. Then you can do magic. Yes. Uh, can but you throw wings or something? Like, sprinkle some magic dust? What am I, a fucking wood nymph? It doesn't work like that. But you can do magic. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, what does that mean? So why haven't you escaped yet? You've been here as long as I have, at least. Yeah, well, um, they took my staff, so... Um, Can't some mages do magic without their staffs? No, no, they need them. I've heard that they can. As I was saying, they took my staff, so I can't do much magic at the moment. Can't you like turn into a toad or something? Oh, oh yes, of course, because all mages can turn into toads. That's exactly the type of stereotyping that leads to the marginalization of my people. Oh, there's a mage. I bet he throws fireballs and turns into toads and all kinds of wacky shit. <laughs> you can throw fireballs? Uh, not the point, Lumpy. Lumpy? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend. Yeah, well, you have. That's like if I saw him uh, sitting there, bland, uninteresting white dude, and automatically assumed that he loves John Mayer and Frosted Tips and Yamba Juice. Not cool. 
Okay, sorry. Now what? Well, I don't know. What did you wake me up for? We were trying to escape. I mean, well, I was trying to escape. Lumpy over here wasn't being much help. Seriously, why Lumpy? You were trying to escape. Uh, so how was a pile of rags supposed to help you with that? Well, I don't know, I was cold. I hadn't thought that far ahead. That's kind of a pattern for you, isn't it? Dude, you have been no help at all. All you've done is sit there and whine. I bet you'd be perfectly happy to just sit here the rest of your life if you just had your precious pipe weed. And bread to feed my family. Like, well, well, let's just get back on topic here. Uh, you said that you could still do some magic? Yeah. Is there any way that the magic you can currently perform would help us out of this situation? If that were true, he would have already poofed and skedaddled. Hey, hey, watch your tongue. Those are his words. And how do you know that? Maybe he couldn't do it by himself. What? Am I, am I wrong? I, hey, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you. Mr. Mage, what is your name? Karen. Terrence. Hi, Terrence. Hi, Terrence. I'm, I'm Taylor, and this is Larry. We got off on the wrong foot. Um, I'm sorry if my language was offensive. Truly, I'm just, I'm on edge, and maybe I have some prejudices that I need to examine, but maybe you can help me with that, if you're willing to. But we're not currently in the best possible environment for meaningful self-analysis, so I'm going to try and focus on the issue at hand. Was I wrong in my assessment? If you could use magic to get out of this situation, wouldn't you have already done so? Yes, uh, but hipster Jean Valjean over there does have a point. Larry? Sorry, hipster Jean Valjean Larry has a point. <laughs> I can still do a certain type of magic, but it comes with complications. What kind of complications? Uh, it's not a very aesthetically appealing type of magic. Uh, some consider its use unethical. Its powers unnatural. Its uh, manifestations to be icky. Icky. Icky how? Are you talking about blood magic? Blood magic? Yeah, my second cousin knew a mage who talked about it all the time. It's supposed to be super evil. Oh. It most certainly is not. Uh, it's no more evil than, say, uh, the cobra, the alligator, the wasp. So maybe a little bit evil? <sighs> the point is, blood magic requires a sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? Well, I'm guessing a blood sacrifice, probably. Oh, really? Thanks! I mean, how does it work? How could it help us? Uh, well, theoretically speaking, it, I could give us the power to enter the spirit world, basically become wraiths for about an hour, allowing us to slip through solid material and become invisible. Ooh. Basically, we'd be ghosts for an hour and then the spell would wear off. Sick. Okay, that sounds good. Let's do that. Wait, 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 what's the catch? Yeah, I remember when I said us, um, I meant only two of us. And what would happen to the third? Um, yeah, so remember when I said icky? One of us would have to die? Correct. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, well, that's why they call it blood magic and not rainbow sprinkle sparkle happy fun time magic. Well, damn, I'm, I don't think we could do that. Yeah, hence my hesitancy. Yeah, that's super heavy. I really shouldn't have even mentioned it. Hardly worth considering when you think about it. Definitely not. Even if it could work, I don't think I could live with myself. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, the weight of that, letting someone else die so you can go free, the guilt of that. Yeah. Yep, not an ideal solution. Although, hypothetically speaking, I'm hypothetically listening. Some of humanity's greatest accomplishments and achievements are kind of the result of overwhelming guilt. What do you mean? Well, we build 
giant cathedrals to pray and ask forgiveness for bad stuff we've done. We promise to be compassionate to our neighbors and everything gets better, all in the name of assuaging guilt. Yeah, like how the Viscount participates in a yearly festival and makes a game of giving away coins to the poor so he can feel better about himself when he's living so well when others are living so poorly. Exactly. Yeah, or how uh, LA millionaires shame the middle class into donating to charities while they live in Malibu. I guess that kind of guilt could be okay. Uh, if I had to live with that kind of guilt, I'd be sure to put it to good use. Yeah, and think about the person willing to give their life to set others free, the ultimate form of selflessness. No one is so revered as the martyr. Look at Joan of Arc. Or Romeo and Juliet. Nah, they were just horny teenagers. Ah, uh, true. Oh, William Wallace. Ooh, good one. Yeah. Optimus Prime. Yeah. Wait, who? Uh, Fred Weasley? Mm. My point being... That, that we have an opportunity here, you know? Not just to escape, but to grow. To pull the cart of humanity forward by the power of the noble ox martyrdom and his partner, the donkey of crushing guilt. Couldn't have said it better myself. Don't forget the great meerkat of selective apathy. Then we're in agreement. I think so. Absolutely. Terrence, can you do it? I mean, yeah. Uh, it'll take me a minute, but... Let's do it. All right, we'll need a, a sword or a knife or something. We can handle that. <laughs> Oh, stop it! Oh, you're twisting my arm off! Oh, 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 the excruciating pain is causing me to yell loudly! Oh, the agony! I hope I'm not distracting anyone from their paperwork! It hurts so bad! Nobody cares! Oh, no! You bit me! There's blood everywhere! Oh, yeah! That's gonna ruin the floor! It looks like it's gonna be super expensive to get those stains out! What? Oh, yeah. No! No! Oh, hey. You're not in excruciating pain. Nah, no, but you are. Taylor kicks Royce in the crotch through the bars. <laughs> My insurance premiums. I'll have to file a claim for workers' comp. Royce passes out. Taylor reaches through the bars and takes Royce's dagger. Here you go. Wow. You two make a good team. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. You were great, Taylor. Mm, couldn't have done it without you, Larry. Aw. You still want to go through with this? Yeah, do you? I mean, it's the only way. We agreed. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right. Step forward. Uh, no, no, step back. Okay, I mean, one of you step forward and one of you step back. Huh? Yeah, which one? Okay, both of you. I mean, one of you step to the left and the other one step to the... Uh, Whoa! Uh, wait, Who's what? left? Who steps where? Okay, forward and to the... God damn it, this is super hard when I don't know who's being sacrificed. Oh, uh -oh. yeah, I see that. Yeah, that would make it tricky. Yeah, exactly, so who's doing it? Me. Me. Uh, who's going? I am. I am. Jesus Christ, who is volunteering to be sacrificed oh. to death for this blood ritual oh. that will enable the other two individuals to escape? Oh, come on, that was explicit. No, I understood that time. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so neither of you wants to be the martyr. No, it's not that, I'm fine being a martyr. Yeah, it's just that, you know, the whole dying part is, well. <laughs> well, I'd offer to do it, but unless either one of you has learned how to perform a maleficarium in the last few minutes, I'm the only one who can do the ritual. <sighs> oh. It's just not, Right, that one of us has to die. Yeah, I mean, maybe we shouldn't do it. Well, if we don't get out of here soon, someone is bound to find the Keystone Cop over here, and then we're all fucked. You assaulted a guard. You helped. Yeah, they'd kill all of us, just to be sure. Uh, so all of us die, or one of us dies. Seems like it. 
I can't make a decision like this. Me neither. Uh, well, don't look at me. You know what? Screw it. Let's open this up for popular opinion. Hey, you. Yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. up? That's you. Uh, all right. Yep. Clap if you want to. Who am I kidding? Nobody should clap for this bullshit. Raise oh. your hand if you think Larry should be the martyr. Yeah, mm -hmm. Larry. Yeah, you know how this works. You've all seen Peter Pan. Just uh, uh, who wants Tinkerbell to live? Oh. Taylor and myself being Tinkerbell in this scenario. Yeah, yay! I like Taylor and you, yay! Uh, yay. If, you, if you want me to slit Larry's throat so that me and Taylor can live, raise your hand. Wow, yeah. that's a leading question. Okay, okay, fine, fine, okay, good, all right. Um, who votes I kill Taylor, allowing myself and Larry to live? Okay, uh, thank you. Step forward. <gasps> Larry, uh, all right, I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna sting. Ugh. What are you idiots doing? Um, Nothing. What, what are you doing with my dagger? Uh, just uh, a little blood sacrifice so we can escape. Listen, oh God, this hurts so bad. Listen, I have a great idea. Why don't you just take the key out of my pocket and escape through the north door? It's down there and to the left. Ugh. If a prisoner escapes during the assault, insurance will cover it. I might even get a bigger cell. Uh, is this a trick? Uh, won't you get in trouble? I'd get in a lot more trouble if a blood mage performs some sort of creepy ritual and then escapes. I mean, there's always more paperwork when there's magic involved. Just take the keys and get out of here. Won't someone come looking for us? No, no one really cares. But if you start being seditious or treasonous again, maybe wear a false mustache or something. Mm -hmm. And you don't steal any more pipe weed. Or bread. Whatever. Here. But the lock. Use the other door. Oh. Why two locks? A fail safe. Well, convenient. Sorry I kicked you. Don't be. I'm in the union. I might even get full disability. She yeah. opens the door. Um, all right, let's, uh, get out of here. Thanks for your assistance. Yeah, yeah, just call me Victoria's messenger. <laughs> yeah, deus ex machina much? Good luck with your claim. Good luck with your escape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, real quick, uh, do I look lumpy to you? Kinda. How? Oh, okay, baby steps. Oh. Little baby steps. Oh, oh. Guards, escape! Prisoners escaping to the south! No one cares! They broke a lock on a cell door. The cost and property damage alone. What? No! Blackout. Uh. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just gonna go through and if you would like to unmute, go ahead and you can turn videos back on. Let's go back. There we go. All right. So, Rich, any, uh, any reaction or... Um, yeah, uh, full, full disclosure, um, my computer like started whining like it was about to explode, so I quickly turned it off and been wondering about that, so I turned on my phone, so I was like gone for like that middle chunk a little bit. Um, but yeah, what this is really helpful for me is seeing like how it, like how much physical comedy I'm trying to write in there and then how we're, how we're doing that through Zoom, and so that's helping me um, crystallize everything and trying to find out, okay, what makes sense to me but what might not make sense um, to, to people watching it and where do I need to like flesh things out and make things more clear. So I'm, I'm definitely open to hearing um, any questions people have about what they saw. Let's go. Yeah. Um, okay, anyone, um, any actors or anyone have any reaction or questions? I mean, I think because of the cut, like because of the way in which Rich put this together, 
obviously we all kind of sit comfortably in these roles. So that's never been the issue. And I mean, interacting with each other is very familiar for all of us. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I guess I felt a sort of comfort level to the piece that made it not confusing to me, if that helps. And also uh, know, knowing yeah. that Rich kind of based these characterizations on our own personalities a little bit made it just uh -huh. like, it, it, don't overthink it. Don't try to create so much of a character out of this. Just be you. Yeah, sure. they're kind of tailored. <laughs> That's kind of what we all did. <laughs> be, be you just dialed up about 200%. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> be you with blood magic. Yeah. <laughs> so be you. yeah. I do have to say it was a lot of fun to watch you guys interact. And I, and I and I do love that it worked out that um the but you two are married and on the same screen and like <laughs> it was really it, was, it really um really played to those characters I don't know it was yeah um anyone yeah, else it worked. anyone in our audience hey Emma is the yeah script posted anywhere. Um, the script I put the I put the script in the group. Yeah, it's a it's a Google Doc link that I just put in the event. Okay, that's why I'm having trouble finding it. I'm better when I read it. Let me see if I can post it here. Great job, guys! I went to school with Eric Shute. Hi, it's Maddie. Hi, Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's I didn't great. see you until now. Hi. <laughs> yeah, hello. Well, you don't see me at all because I look like a monster person. But honestly, like the two of you working together was was great. Um, Royce, my friend Sarah Hill, who had to, whoever plays Royce, I don't remember your name, but my roommate Sarah Hill says she knows you, and she. Ah oh, yes. Yes, yeah, Sarah sent me a message. She said she's watching. <laughs> like oh my god. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think my like. This is really super picky, Rich, so, like, don't... Yeah, yeah. But, like, for me, um, just it's a formatting thing, just so that, like, when a producer takes a look at your script, um, right away, the first thing um, I'm going to notice is what the format of this is, and the way that it's written right now doesn't give me, like, an accurate representation of how long um, this show is going to be because of the way it's laid out. So mm -hmm. that's one of those things that like, once you kind of figure out exactly like where you're going with it to look up like the standard for submissions in any kind of way, like what the standard script format would be so that I have an accurate representation of like, how long is this play gonna be? Cause it's one of the first things I look for as like a producer. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just the first thing that kind of like popped out to me, but I really enjoyed Taylor and um, Larry. Yes. I really enjoyed their relationship with each other. And I'm trying to like think of a specific point, but I really, I just really liked the two of them together. And I don't know if that's because it was Eric and his wife. Um, <laughs> that's but, had to work out some chemistry. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, in real life, that's probably exact. Like, if we were in this like heightened situation, I'm quite sure this is exactly how. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> no. um, yeah. yeah. The other thing with their relationship is um, kind of taking that sense of dialing it, it to the max. It's kind of the two halves of what I see as the like middle class millennial, like one half of like super uber social justice and get out there and do the marching and then the other half, the apathetic stoner. And then how, <laughs> do those, how would those in two interact in a crisis basically? Sure. Yeah. That's, I, I, I had a, uh, a fun time like watching, it was like type A versus type B, <laughs> <laughs> which was fun. It works in real life too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I agree with that. I love Larry and Taylor's uh, whole arc in their relationship, how they come to respect each other more as it goes on. Mm -hmm. Like with the right stimulus, Larry is able to perk up and like, get the job done if he has to. For sure. If he finds like an iotum of hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, anyone else? Any comments, questions? You should be all, hopefully all of you, all of you can unmute. Click the thing. I'm new to Zoom. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, they should be able to unmute themselves. Yeah. Anybody? Um, I did put the um, <laughs> I, did, I did put the um, script in the chat as well. If you want to take, if anyone wants to take a look, um, it is available in the event. Um, you can't edit it for obvious reasons. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought this was a lot of fun, um, and I I loved the um, didn't expect that the the pile of rags mage I thought that was a lot of fun and like the quirkiness and um like that all of, all of like the modern references kind of came from him and I thought that was cool um yeah, he's kind of the the mage he's the most anachronistic character obviously in making those references and right. the, the thing that was that was trickiest for us was because if, if this is in setting like at French Fest or something then the whole the whole Tinkerbell thing works. Yeah. And I've always hated that moment and I really loathe audience participation stuff. But I was <laughs> like, why not just throw it's just kind of asking for that kind of kitschy type of thing. Um mm -hmm. so we were like, how do we make that happen? Um so we just Mark and I just just went with that. But um, that that's something that would definitely hopefully look different um in an actual staging. Um the Peter Pan. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th I think it could be interesting. I mean, it would be with the staging as well, but it could be interesting to um, when he goes to take the vote for Taylor to die, if he doesn't even let them have a reaction. Like, we we did the cricket moment, but it, but you could also, the other way for that is to have him, anyone want Taylor? No? Okay. Like, not even give a chance. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, and, there's, and there's a lot of stuff, um, like, be because these characters are written for for, for these actors to a large degree. It's uh, uh, like they take a lot of leeway and they, you know, Mark can improv the heck out of that for a long time if he wants to. Like there's there's a lot of room to just explore in, in a lot of those moments. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, if there are no other comments or questions, thank you all so much for tuning in. This was so much fun. And um, if you have any other notes or anything, um, feel free to send them either to buffalotheaterworkshop at gmail.com and we can forward them on to Rich if maybe you don't want to discuss them in the formal setting. Um, if, and, or you can post in the Facebook group as well. The event will stay live um, and I will post the video sometime tomorrow. Awesome. So, all right. Awesome. Thank you all so much and enjoy the rest Thank of you. Stay Thank healthy. you so much. Appreciate it. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.